The following presentation of the Mass is made possible by your generous support of Catholic TV. Catholic TV, in cooperation with Channel 68, invites you to celebrate the sacred mysteries, listen to God's Word, and in the Holy Eucharist, proclaim Jesus' victory over death until He comes in glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we come together as God's holy family to celebrate these holy mysteries, we celebrate today the feast of St. Gregory the Great, a pope and doctor of the church. Gregory was a great reformer of his day. Uh, he's probably best known for his chant, and uh, our series of chants, and uh, it is through his work uh, that the church was able to move forward. As we move forward in this liturgy and in our lives of faith, let's take a moment of quiet and consolation, placing ourselves in the merciful heart of Christ and in recognizing those times that we have failed to walk in God's way of love. Let's ask our God for forgiveness. We have a God who is full of gentleness and compassion. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us, the right hand of the Father, uh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, through the intercession of Pope St. Gregory, endow, we pray, with the spirit of wisdom, those to whom you have given authority to govern, that the flourishing of a holy flock may become the eternal joy of the shepherds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let's open up our hearts and minds now to hear God's word. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. For God did not destine us for wrath, but to gain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, as indeed you do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I 
My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town of Galilee. He taught them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching, because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue there was a man with the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out in a loud voice, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet, come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down in front of them and came out of him without doing him any harm. They were all amazed and said to one another, What is there about his word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And news of him spread everywhere in the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord In today's Gospel, there are two different types of authority at work. There is the authority that Jesus has and with which Jesus speaks, and it is the powers, the command of his words, of his very presence that astonish people. Uh, people who are probably just hearing about him, people who are just learning about him, just you know, word is starting to spread about him. And he speaks with such authority. And the other authority at work is that of the unclean demon, the authority that he tries to hold over Jesus by calling him by name. When someone calls us by name, we presume that they know us. We presume that they know all about us. And this demon is using this as a way to get at Jesus, but Jesus will have none of it. He recognizes that he has authority over this demon. He has power over this demon, even though this demon knows him, knows about him. Uh, you would think that you know Jesus would be fine with somebody naming him, but... Oftentimes in Jesus' day, when you named someone, you had a claim over them. Uh, you had power over them. And Jesus was having none of that. 
Uh, there is no power that anyone can have over Jesus uh, save, for the, save for the power of the Holy Spirit that is within Jesus, that comes out of Jesus and causes him to speak with such authority. The man whose feast we celebrate today, St. Gregory the Great, uh, spoke with such authority, uh, spoke with the authority that comes from the Holy Spirit. Uh, and it is by his preaching, it is by his writing, that he won uh, the title of doctor, was given the title of doctor of the church. Uh, so great, so profound were his writings, uh, as well as his, as his work, uh, the work that he, in which he engaged uh, as bishop, as pope, uh, and as one who had authority. Uh, the authority that Gregory had uh, was exercised in a most profound, yet in a most uh, humble way. Uh, Gregory knew that it was not he who had the power, it was God's Holy Spirit that was working through him. Uh, we as a people of faith must recognize the same, uh, that any power, any authority that we have comes from uh, God's power, God's authority. And we are just exercising that which has been given to us. Uh, oftentimes in uh, human history, there are uh, leaders who have assumed power, who have taken power. Uh, and more often than not, uh, those kingdoms come to ruin. Those kingdoms fall uh, sometimes as quickly as they come into being uh, because they have no foundation. They have no lasting foundation. Uh, the authority with which uh, St. Gregory the Great spoke, uh, the authority uh, with which Jesus speaks uh, and has control over elements such as demons um, come from Almighty God himself. Uh, and so as a people of faith, we come to recognize uh, that as uh, people who are subject to the authority of Almighty God, subject to the authority of the Holy Spirit, that we would do well uh, to uh, recognize this authority, to submit to this authority, and in doing so, to, to experience a true sense of freedom, uh, a sense of freedom that comes from knowing who we are, of being to be claimed by God. Uh, and that is a good thing. Indeed, uh, if anyone is to have claim over us, it is Almighty God. And so as a people of faith, let us come to recognize this claim that God has on us. Let us uh, allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through us. And let us indeed uh, come to recognize that any power, any authority in our own lives uh, comes from Almighty God. As a people of faith, we pray uh, through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, that we may have the courage to exercise any authority that we have been given with humility and with love, just as Gregory did. And as a people of faith, we come to recognize that uh, our authority uh, is only rooted, uh, the only lasting authority that we have is rooted in the kingdom of God's almighty love. faith, we offer our prayers of petition and thanksgiving. We pray for our Pope Francis, for our Cardinal Archbishop Sean Patrick, and all bishops, pastors, and leaders of God's church, that through the intercession of St. Gregory the Great, the authority that they exercise may be done with humility and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick among us, that they may be healed in body, mind, soul, and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the gift of life, for the sanctity of all life, from the point of conception to the moment of natural death, and for an end to the sin to abortion, euthanasia, and capital punishment. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for our beloved dead, for all who sleep in the peace of Christ, that they may come to fullness of life in the kingdom through Christ Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and for those intentions which we hold in the silence of our hearts. 
We pray to the Lord. Good and loving God in Gregory the Great, you give us a wonderful example of faith, fidelity, and love. Help us through his intercession and example to draw our lives ever closer to you, to be transformed and through your grace transform the world to make it more like your kingdom of glory. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant our supplication, we pray, O Lord, that this sacrifice we present in celebration of St. Gregory may be for our good, since through its offering you have loosed the offenses of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Gregory the Great you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The history of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John Patrick, our Cardinal Archbishop, his assistant bishops, the clergy, religious, and all your holy people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Gregory the Great, and all your saints who will please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
from this table to the ends of earth. Gather all of your people in this feast of all creation. This is the bread of life for all to share, bread of hope and redemption. Bread to feed a world of hungers. Come and eat this bread. Come and drink this cup. Come and share the feast our God has spread. You have promised us. You are here. And let us pray. Through Christ the teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ the living bread, that on the feast, of Saint Gre feast day of St. Gregory they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity. Through Christ our Lord. My thanks once again for Carol and Chet for joining us and for Kathy for leading us so beautifully in song, for all of you for being with us on this day, and the Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you always and in always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration intended, let us go in peace and love to serve the Lord through one another. Thanks. Have a great day, everyone. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord has invited us to the altar, and this great prayer has brought benefit to ourselves, the church, and the whole world. Please help the television mass to continue by sending a donation to Father Reed, Catholic TV, Box 9196, Watertown, Massachusetts, 02471, or watch and contribute online at catholictv.com.